Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. This one is a little bit different as it's gonna be a kind of a vlog type thing of when myself, Oshan and Connor, who we're all part of Copper Gaming, we went to Brighton to film some motion capture animations or mocap animations. So we thought we'd just make a little video showcasing the process, what we did and how we did it and just kind of recorded different parts of our day just to show you guys as we thought it might be very interesting to see. Now all of these animations are for our game as we needed some very specific animations so we thought mocap would be the best way to get those for our game which is the department which I'll leave a link to in the description down below and also in the top right of the screen now if you want to find out more information about that and I'll probably be talking about it more throughout today's video as well as obviously these animations are specifically for that so I'll give you some context as to what's happening in the game so you can understand and see why the animation is doing this. I also just want to say a big thank you to Barclays for allowing us to come to their Eagle Labs in Brighton completely for free to use their mocap suit. Absolutely amazing opportunity, so a big thank you to Barclays for allowing us to do that. Now none of us have actually ever done motion capture before, so this was a completely new experience for us, which meant the first hour or two once we got there, we're just kind of learning it and getting into it and just messing about to see what it was and how it all worked. Now because we were trying to just figure it out, we don't really have any footage of that, so what we were basically doing is Oshan and Connor were trying to put on the suit, work out how all the sensors worked, while I was on the computer working out how the software worked and how to link the suit to the software. We're all doing our parts and once we did finally get it all working, it was actually quite easy to do. Once we knew what we were doing, we were able to get it all set up in about five minutes. And that includes all the calibration, which I'll show you now as well. So as you can see, this is the calibration of how the whole system works. So what we're doing is I'm on the laptop looking at the software which is calibrating it while Connor is wearing the suit. I'm telling him what poses to go into, so for the moment he is in a T pose and he's now just gone down to an A pose. He will hold these positions for about five seconds and move on to the next one. He's now going to be walking so we can calibrate the movement as well. He will walk forward six steps or three meters and then stop as you can see perfectly here and you can also see what I'm doing on the screen now. So this is now a B pose which is doing the hands and he's gonna move it up, and then he'll go into a P pose, which is pinching to get all the fingers working nicely as well. And as you can see, I'm looking at both the monitor on the laptop and Connor to make sure that everything is working perfectly how it should be. He's gonna hold that position while it is finalizing the calibration, and once it is done, he'll be able to walk back over to the center of the area, as you can see here. And as you can see there on screen, that is now working. Is That one wasn't perfect, so the hands are a little bit off, as you can see, his hand on the left there is a little bit off so we'll then calibrate it again and after we calibrated it at that time it worked perfectly. So I believe if I remember correctly the issue with the calibration there was I think the hand sensor wasn't connected properly or wasn't turned on properly so we then just went through reconnected all the sensors recalibrated it and just said that whole process which you can see is very very quick and easy to do and once that's all done we then get straight into recording the animations. Now this suit was a little bit finicky, so we'd have to recalibrate it every now and then, but as again, it didn't take that long, so it wasn't that much of an issue. And once you've got it calibrated, you've obviously got to test out the proper way, as you can see Connor perfectly demonstrating here. So now it's time to start recording the animations. Before we came, we had a call where we wrote down a whole list of what we really wanted to get done throughout the day. So what animations did we want to record? Do we really need for the game? And then an extra few, which we don't need, but they're nice to have if we have some time. So we went through the list in order of what is the most important. And for us, that is a key scene in our tech demo, in our tutorial, in what we're gonna be showcasing to the public and to investors. That's what we needed to get done first. So I was the one on the computer making sure everything is working properly, recording it, making sure it's all calibrated, connected, everything going smoothly like that, while Connor was the one actually recording it, and Oshan was also there helping direct it, as well as also being the other person. So for this specific animation, we had two people, but we only had one suit. So Oshan was there as the second person, so Connor had someone there as a reference to actually interact with. So our process of doing this is we would have a few practice runs before actually recording. So that means Connor and Oshan can practice the movements perfectly and I can also make sure that everything still works and what they can and can't do. For example, we found out that Oshan and Connor 
can't really touch that much because that will knock the sensors and even the slightest movement even if they don't touch the sensor but they touch around the area which can move it even slightly that is enough for it to then be out of place and need calibration again so as i said earlier the suit is a little bit finicky but i think that's just mocap in general to be honest you need to make sure you're being careful with how it will work so you're doing it all properly and then once we have done the practice runs it comes time to actually record the animation itself so what i do is i press record and i give them a countdown while i'm waiting for it to fully load up so it doesn't cut off anything at the beginning once i'm ready i will tell them to go when they're ready and they will then begin the animation they'll start moving about they'll start recording it and i'm watching both the laptop and connor at the same time to ensure that what connor is doing is reflecting perfectly on the laptop to make sure that the character is doing that as well now there are times where it wasn't perfect for example the hand sometimes wasn't perfect or the head but things like that aren't too bad because we can fix that in post if it's just kind of one bone we can easily just rotate that as long as it's not anything that we need moving a lot for example the head if connor is just looking straight forward the whole time but it's going slightly to the right we can just rotate his head to the left a bit more fix it and that's perfect the trickier ones is more like the fingers and ones where it's more finicky that's where we will need to redo the animation from the beginning to make sure that it is perfect so to recap the process of how we were recording animations is we will discuss what animation we want to do and how we want to do it we will then have a few practice runs where Oshan can direct Connor and we can all talk about how we want it to play out and I can give my input on how I would need it to be kind of recorded so I can use it in engine as I'm really going to be the one developing with it Connor can then have a few practice runs going through to make sure he knows what he's doing and then we will record it we'll normally take a few takes on the recording even if the first one we think was perfect we'll get a few anyway just in case it wasn't and then we also have some variety as well we have multiple options as you know this isn't something we own this isn't something we're going to be doing every single day so we need to make the most of the situation while we are here once we've finished recording the animation we'll all go around the laptop and review it make sure we're all happy with it and then connor can also see oh i didn't like how i did that i'll do this differently and then if we want to we can record another take or if we're happy with it we'll start the whole process again on a new animation and we'll just be doing this all day going through and through and through all the different lists of animations which we have some of which will break up for example one of them was using a keypad what i was saying was that because i'm going to be developing with this the best way for me to actually develop with it because the player is going to be using the keypad is to make it modular so what we did was we had one animation of connor lifting up his finger another animation of him just holding it there in idle and one animation of him coming back down again we also had animations of him going in to each of the different keys as well that way it's modular so it's a lot easier for me to then do these animations for going up going down idle moving the finger all that stuff so when the player is doing it they can take their time it's not limited to the animation the gameplay isn't following the animation the animation is following the gameplay and that is a key thing of how we want the game to work because we want the player to have full control over everything we don't want them to feel like they're being hindered or led down a certain path and animations can be a huge part of that and once we were happy with everything we recorded all the animations we wanted to do we packed up and then we started heading home as we all had a long couple hours journey ahead of us once we got back home we then retargeted the animations onto our skeletal meshes and our characters which we are using in the game and that then really brought it all to life a lot more so it already felt amazing being there seeing it all working in real time and then putting it on our own characters took it that one step further so i'm obviously not going to be able to show a whole lot because i don't want to put out spoilers for the game however i will show you some more of the generic ones so this one on screen here you can see connor recording it in person of walking with the taser out and going around the corner and then you can see this on our character here hughes he is walking with the taser and going around the corner and now you can see there the hands are a little bit far apart and that's why i was mentioning earlier where sometimes it wasn't perfect and you know if the sensors got too close to each other on the hands it didn't work out amazingly however i also said earlier that you can fix some things in post this is one that'll be easy to fix because we can just make sure the hands are moved a little bit closer and we'll probably want to have changed that anyway even if they were closer so that it fits perfectly the taser that we would have because obviously you know we couldn't bring an actual taser into the eagle labs and hold that while doing the mocap so we just had to you know pretend and we can then modify it in post as we're going to do as you would do with all animations anyway so with that i think that'll be it for this video i hope you did enjoy this you know it's something a little bit different it's following us along as we went to do some motion capture animations 
in the Brighton Barclays Eagle app. Again, a very big thank you to Barclays for giving us this opportunity and allowing us to do that. If you guys did enjoy this video, please do make sure to like and subscribe down below as it really does help me in the channel out a lot. It's the best way to support me. And also check out Copper Gaming and the department on Steam as well. Wishlist it now and stay tuned for further updates regarding the game. So once again, thank you so very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next one.